Dear colleagues, excellencies, um, good afternoon. My name is Chantaline Carpentier. I'm the chief of the Ontan New York office. And it's a pleasure to be with you this afternoon and thank you for joining us. Right away, I'm gonna ask everyone to mute the microphone, please, because we can hear some people. And uh, I'm delighted to be with you because, um, and welcome you to this high level political forum side event uh, uh, that Ongdad is pleased to present to you this, uh, with the latest estimate of the impact of COVID-19 on developing countries. And I must say, I wish we had better news than we do, but um, I think it's important to know where we stand so we can together with the uh, action and the tools and put the right tools forward to be able to address this unprecedented um, uh, calamity. So what I would like to do, we will, we are fortunate to, to this afternoon to have my uh, Deputy Secretary General, Madame Isabelle Durand, who will brief on, on the latest uh, work from ONCTAD um, documenting the impact of COVID-19 on developing countries. And then we will have a response from His Excellency Mr. Neil Pierre, G77 coordinator from the permanent mission of Guyana to the United Nations, as well as Ms. Sharon Linden, um, lead negotiator on sustainable development for um, at the Alliance for Small Island States and from the permanent mission to the United Nations. Both of them good friends and I'm delighted to have them with us. I will again ask everyone to, put, to mute their microphone. Maybe Elena, you can help me do that so that we uh, stop the background noise. For please uh, prepare your question. We intend to have time answers, question and answers. And to do so, I invite you to click on the participant at the bottom of your screen. There's a little person there. If you click on it, the participant box is going to open. And if you go, over 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 your name you'll be able to raise your hand uh, and then i'll know that i can recognize you if you feel more comfortable to just type your question in the chat box feel free to do that as well by clicking on the little bubble and uh and then you can just put your question there and i'll be happy to read that question and gather them for our deputy secretary general Isabel Durand. so with further no further ado i would like to uh give the screen in this case to Madame Zura to give us a briefing on the documented impact of COVID-19. Madame Zura, you have the screen. Thank you, Chantaline. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be with you, uh, colleagues and friends of New York, maybe everywhere in the world uh, and from different origin or uh, responsibilities. And it's important for me to try to discuss with you on, of course, this important issue. We all know that the coronavirus pandemic has triggered the most severe, severe economic crisis in 100 years. And we are expecting GDP to decline by almost 5% in 2020, and that an additional 130 million people may live in extreme poverty by 2030. So it is a troubling perspective and put into question the achievement of the SDGs. It why, it's why the, the UN Decade for Action is just more needed than, than ever. Even if it's difficult to fulfill, we, we have to and we will do that. But uh, as we are moving through the pandemic, we see that COVID-19 is likely catalyzing and or accelerating some change. And I would like to raise five major changes. First, uh, the pandemic has exposed the limits and risks of hyper-globalization marked by concentrated supply chain and just-in-time production systems. It made the case for shorter, more diversified and regional supply chain. The World Investment Report launched in June highlights deeply this trend. Second, we leapfrogged in terms of digital adaptation. Uh, it's, what, it's what we are doing now. And yet the crisis has also exacerbated the risk of deepening the digital divide and emphasized the need to invest in ICT infrastructure build up digital skills and entrepreneurship and implemented policies for data protection. Three, um, there is a kind of positive side effect of the crisis is that our environment got a breathing space. Air quality improved substantially and some spaces have reappeared in places where they hadn't been seen in a long time. 
Has this led to sufficient social acceptability of more climate-friendly production and consumption patterns? I'm not sure, but it has to be part of the recovery. Four, uh, with debt spiraling, the crisis brought a momentum for debt forgiveness and our work on debt and call for solidarity has contributed to this outcome. Five, the crisis has not only stressed how much we depend on each other, but also uh, how much we can do if we coordinate our action. Multilateralism and international cooperation remain critical and are the keys to building, building back better. So, um, the pandemic has, of course, uh, driven our work over the last four months. We have reallocated resources to invest in analytical reports and communicate our findings and recommendations. And I invite you to consult the dedicated page on our website that we publish every day or every week the different analytical reports and analysis that we provide. I hope that it could be useful for you. Uh, UNCTED has also played a critical role in the drafting of the UN framework for the immediate socioeconomic response to COVID-19 on the, uh, the whole UN, and it is a member of the advisory committee of the Multi-Partner Trust Fund to combat uh, COVID-19. So, how is UNCTAD contributing to the UNSG COVID-19 response? So, I would like to provide you an overview of specific action carried out and plan to support you, member states, in the recovery of your trade and industries from COVID-19. First, on research and analysis. Our research and analysis has contributed to analyzing and understanding the socioeconomic impact of the pandemic and providing policy recommendations for building back better. Since the beginning of the pandemic, we have published more than 75 analytical reports, commentaries, and new items on COVID-19. In our analysis of the COVID-19 induced shock overall, we called for a 2.5 trillion US dollar coronavirus crisis package for developing countries and emphasized the dire consequences for the poorest countries. We also highlighted the risk of country groups such as the high vulnerability of small island developing states and argued that Africa needs a Marshall Plan to ride out the COVID-19 crisis. We have researched different thematic angles. In the area of trade, we produce forecasts on international trade, which have been widely used and cited. Uh, according to our estimates, trade in the second quarter of 2020 fell by a staggering 27% compared to the same quarter in the previous year. It's dramatic. Our World Investment Report showed that uh, reshoring, diversification and regionalization will drive restructuring of global value chains. In March already, we had shown the impact of the lockdown in China on global value chain, and we emphasized the need to keep ships moving, ports open and trade flowing, and developed a respective 10-point action plan in this regard. On investment, in addition to the World Investment Report, we produce forecasts on uh, foreign di direct invest investment as well as a special issue of the investment trend monitor on the impact of the pandemic on global uh, foreign direct investment and global value chains. Our special issue of the investment policy monitor provides an investment policy response to the pandemic. In the area of debt and financing, we have emphasized the escalating debt problem and warned that many countries are at the verge of a very critical debt crisis. We have also called for securing access to financial services for vulnerable people during COVID-19. UNCTAD has advised the, G the G20, the G7, on various of these issues. And it is with pride that I say that our advocacy has contributed to a momentum for broadly supported and previously unmanageable before. So our work on the digital economy and technology has called for technology solution for tackling the pandemic and its impacts. It showed the facilitating of e-government solution and how e-commerce helped countries cope with COVID-19. In our e-week, e-commerce week in April, which take place in Geneva every year, uh, she was this time, of course, uh, completely uh, um, 
um, um, virtual, but we were really dedicated to COVID-19 issues and how e-commerce could help uh, uh, for the, the, the management and also the recovery of the crisis. We also advocated for protecting science, technology and innovation funding during and after the crisis, uh, especially in the, the field of vaccine. Research on vaccine is so important to keep uh, funding innovation, technology and science. The work showed the urgent need also to bright the digital divide, which is key. We carried out various sectoral analysis, notably on the devastating impact of COVID-19 on tourism and the need for pharmaceutical production. Our recently released study on tourism showed that the pandemic could lead to a loss of at least 1.2 trillion US dollar or 1.5 percent of global GDP in 2020 as a result of the pandemic impact of tourism. COVID-19's links to commodities and the related risk of food insecurity were also analyzed. So uh, it's not only that, we investigated uh, as well uh, and broadly the environmental impact of the crisis, uh, namely in blue economy, finding that apart from the positive side that I just mentioned, the pandemic also boosted waste, which is also a problem on the long term. Our work also argued for defending competition in markets during COVID-19 and said that action is needed to protect consumers, especially in regard with contrafact medicine and medical equipment. And we have seen for a lot of countries how problematic it could be. Finally, but certainly not least, uh, our analysis showed the need for gender sensitive response policy as the pandemic is not gender neutral. neutral. Uh, as mentioned earlier, our analytical work has contributed to various fora and processes in and out the UN uh, system. So, technical cooperation is another uh, important uh, thing that, we, that UNCTAD is providing, and we, uh, we have identified mitigation and recovery UNCTAD programs that can help addressing critical challenges during the pandemic. For instance, we have shown how UNCTAD's e-government platform helps countries stay open for business during the COVID-19 and uh, how custom administration can adapt the use of ASICUDA world to the COVID-19 situation. We have proposed some of our existing projects and created new projects, for instance, in the development accounts system or the SDG fund, etc., to support countries with COVID-19 challenges for instance, we are partnering with the Economic and Social Commission for Western Asia in a project which stimulates entrepreneurship and supports small and medium-sized enterprises in dealing with the crisis. As one of the six agencies on the advisory committee of the Multipartner Trust Fund for COVID-19, we have played an important role in designing and monitoring the fund. We have reached out to all resident coordinators and country offices to present our service and are working closely on several project proposals for the second call of this multi-partner trust fund, a second call which will probably take place more or less around end of July, beginning of August. That's important to know also for you. Uh, we have also advocated for a stronger engagement of non-resident agencies, as UNCTAD, in response mechanisms so that our expertise can more quickly turn into a solution at the country level. This work will continue in line uh, demand of available resources, of course. Finally, um, we also, uh, if we, we are looking ahead, we will continue closely monitoring and analyzing COVID-19 related development. This will include updating related forecasts when relevant and possible, producing research paper, analytical reports, commentaries, and new items. And we are now working on a house-wide publication dedicated to COVID-19 it's not a description of, of, of all the situation. It's really a way to combine data and analysis on key dimension of trade and development and how it can support uh, uh, recovery. So um, it will highlight the severity of the crisis, showing that millions of livelihoods are at risk, but also uh, um, show that uh, creating well-functioning and sustainable markets is a possibility to help for recovering strengthening resilience of the more disadvantaged and most affected countries and people or groups and how debt and finance and development finance could help in this uh, difficult period. 
Consensus building remains critical for us, and we will use all necessary means to facilitate exchange. And we look forward to our, uh, our the annual con the cadre annual conference to be held normally in October, but it will be held in early 2021, in April 2021, uh, in Barbados. And I hope that we could count on your participation remotely or physically, I hope physically, uh, in order to really contribute in this first conference post-COVID uh, to show the importance to take into account all those new difficult elements in the developing uh, process. So uh, I hope that we will uh, be able to welcome you in this conference because it's important to work, of course, with you and not only only for you. So um, we'll stop here, Chantaline. It's really the the, the panorama of what uh, on what we did while we are busy to do now. And of course, I'm really happy to listen to your priorities or what you would like to highlight uh, as uh, 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 G77 or as. Uh, um, uh, small island countries with the specific situation of those countries and also to answer to question coming from the audience on the question that you will ask. So up to you, Chantaline. Thank you so much, Madame Zera. It's a pleasure and thank you for mentioning all these trade facilitation mechanisms that UNTED has been pushing. And I, I, I want to highlight the fact that Dr. Kitui, our Secretary General, also called the maritime port to be remaining open during the uh, COVID-19 to ensure the uh, access to essential foods and medicines, as well as our custom work on Exicuda that you mentioned, as well as the great work on the SMA, SM, MSMEs to ensure that they're part of the resurgence of, uh, of the in the recovery, as well as the work on the time connectivity. Oftentimes, these are the areas that member states don't necessarily know that we work on because they're like very specialized issues. So thank you for that. And without further ado, we'll get back to you with questions. I would like to give the floor to His Excellency, Mr. Pierre, G77 Coordinator of and Permanent Mission of Guyana to the United Nations for a few remarks. Uh, Ambassador Pierre, you have the floor for the screen. Thank you very much, um, Madam Moderator. And if I can just get my presentation up. Uh, <laughs> Madam Moderator, I have the honor to make this intervention on behalf of the Group of 77 and China. <clears throat> the group wishes to thank you, Deputy Secretary General, Ms. Isabel Durant, and your team for organizing this important side event. The message is loud and clear. The impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic have ex exacerbated existing poverty, inequalities, and vulnerabilities within and between countries, reversing development gains of the past decades. Developing countries face a difficult road to recovery from the humanitarian, social, and economic fallout of the global crisis. We acknowledge UNCLAD's hard work in the response to the COVID-19 pandemic, in particular, adapting its technical assistance to respond to country needs. It is important to note that in the midst of the global crisis, UNCTAD is able to adjust and support developing countries through its main analytical reports that contribute to critical policy responses. It is crucial, therefore, to properly document the impacts of the pandemic and, more importantly, the solutions that could help to put us back on track to achieve the 2030 Agenda. The G77 urges UNCTAD to continue this important work as we aim for a resilient recovery that is fully aligned with the 2030 Agenda. The Group of 77 and China considers that this, at this juncture, the enactment and application of unilateral course of economic measures will have a negative, negative impact on the capacity of states to respond efficiently, specifically in the acquisition of medical equipment and supplies to adequately treat their populations in the face of this pandemic. Ultimately, these measures also affect the essential cooperation and solidarity that should prevail among nations. We therefore call upon the international community to adopt urgent and effective measures to eliminate the use of unilateral coercive economic measures against developing countries. The group reaffirms the need for a strengthened multilateral system underpinned by the principles of unity and solidarity. This must be demonstrated through collective actions at all levels and with all stakeholders. We look forward to working closely with UNCTAD 
on our road to recovery and leaving no country, no one behind. I thank you. Thank you so much, Ambassador Pierre, for uh, this. And you can count on OMTAD. I don't want to put word in the mouth of my Deputy Secretary General, but from us in New York, you can count on us. Madame Zira, you want to come in before we go to Madame Lindo? Yes, just to say that uh, <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you because I'm used to, to meet the colleagues of G77 in Geneva. So very happy to, to collaborate with G77 in New York. And of course, all what you mentioned is in the priorities that we will continue to develop in the next months and years. And it's true that what you said about uh, um, medicine, equipment, etc., shows the importance to to change the, the, the value chain, to relocate some production, and especially the pharmaceutical and health or of first necessity products which have to be manufactured in new countries especially or in your region in order to really uh, help you uh, to have access to to it very very shortly and well to benefit of all the aspect and technical uh, um, technical transfer that you could use so we can discuss a lot of things but frankly i sh i fully share you you concern and i can assure you that we will continue to work on the same issues and be really uh, 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 close to your priorities so I, i'm sure that the collaboration will be will be good in the next months even if the situation of course is dramatic for for some countries especially Thank you, Madame Durand. And we will continue this discussion. I already have one question registered, but before I would like to give the floor to uh, somebody that everybody knows, I think, Miss Sharon Lindo. Um, and apologies, uh, Sharon, for the mistake in your name in the slide there. I'm not sure what happened there. A uh, lead negotiator of OAS, AOS is in permanent, uh, at the permanent mission of Belize to United Nations. Uh, Sharon, you do have uh, the screen. Thank you, Chantal. I'm not sure if it's someone that everybody knows or it's notorious. Um, Madam DSG, um, I don't think you, or maybe you do know how much AOSIS in particular, um, G77 as a broader group, really relies and counts on the support of UNCTAD, um, both here in New York and in Geneva, with um, some of our specific directors there. Um, I think that and particularly during this kind of crisis, we found that reports that you have produced have really helped us to contextualize the situation, not for our individual countries, which we are aware of, but put it in, in the broader scope of things, of the collective small island developing states, of regions, um, of the developing country network. Um, I think you were very clear this afternoon about the difficulties that countries are facing, countries like mine. Um, we're really just buckling under the strain. Um, I, I, for some small island developing states that are overtly reliant on, on things like tourism, we're talking losses of 40% of GDP with concurrent losses in, in employment. I saw a note from uh, a country in the Caribbean that that said that that amounted to a quarter of their workforce already applying for, for support. So I think in, in the early push that a lot of us took to, to shelter in place and to close off our borders from this impending threat that we really didn't understand, what we really did was lock ourselves off from, the, from global trade. Um, there is now the, the push to restart a lot of our economies. There have been some of us that, that have accessed um, resources from the banks, but all of us have not. And I think it's well known that a lot of us are really just locked out of these resources based on historical income levels. Um, there has been a, a move in some countries to, as they open their borders, to maybe do more of, of the same of what we know, what we know well. We also see other countries taking maybe more unique approaches to this situation. So not targeting the, the short-term tourist, but the long-term business visitor um, that can really stay in countries for up to a year to help to, to restart and build up these countries. Um, as well, uh, there are already difficulties on the health front. Uh, I think a lot of SIDS, um, Belize certainly did, did very well 
in that regard. We had very, very low levels, even comparatively. But the borders in Belize are also very porous. And, and I think that even that, that early success might be short-lived, we just don't know. Um, and I think that maybe as a long-term view, a mid to long-term view, when six countries talk about building back better and what it means for them, it's, all, it's looking at the systems in place at the global level, um, maybe a restructuring of the debt dynamics that, that have so many of us in this precarious situation, looking at how we can access resources that really takes into account who we are as countries, as vulnerable countries, um, and designing a system or redesigning a system perhaps that can really help us to to maybe manage these types of disasters better. Um, probably also don't need to tell any of you that it's no hurricane season in the Caribbean. And it's it's just a matter of time, really it is, for a country to be faced with overwhelming economic challenges and a natural disaster. So I think the, the struggles are many. Um, like you, I think we do have, um, we do see a lot of opportunity in what the future might hold. Um, I guess what we would like more of from OMTAD is more of the same support that we've been receiving. Allow us to see ourselves in the reports that you produce. Um, we know it's a struggle on both sides. We don't have the data to give you. And so it's hard for you to take this into consideration when preparing these reports. But maybe there's a middle point. There's somewhere that we can reach so that the story of SIDS, um, the story of Belize is not just one that's qualitative, but we have the information uh, to push. Thank you. Thank you, Chantalee. Thank you so much, uh, Sharon. And um, I have a question, Deputy, um, Deputy Secretary General. Should I go to the question? Do you want to react? So, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Sharon for this vibrant uh, uh, advocacy for your countries. And it's not Frankly, uh, uh, um, we are completely uh, dedicated to the importance to work with you. Not only because you are, well, yes, you are a small population, but you are really uh, uh, in big danger for all the issues that you, that you mentioned very well. And secondly, because you are really a place where uh, you are suffering or, or affect, we are affected by different things, more than others related to climate issues, hurricanes, etc. That issue, tourism issue. And it's why it's important to really help you to have access to funds that I understand very well because without fund you cannot recover. And secondly, to help you or to accompany you in the way to transform your activities, especially in tourism, for what you said very well, the long-term uh, uh, visitors. Uh, and I think that we have to work on that closely. You know, or maybe you don't know, that we are also working with WTO, so that it's the tourism organization. Of course, this worldwide tourism organization is related to all the countries in the world. Yes, good. We are dedicated to, especially to work for you, for the small island country on tourism. They are, they are aware, but I think that we can do more with the data and the collaboration with WTO in order to help you to, first of all, to rebuild this sector and to, as soon as possible, welcome differently uh, the visitor of your fantastic countries, because it's, of course, fantastic countries, but it's not enough. You need economic recovery, you need jobs for your, 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 your population, especially for, for young people, because I know that there was a big, uh, uh, a big concern with the young population, which is without uh, future. And I can tell you, and also for all the rest of the audience, that we have had a very vibrant uh, advocacy from the Prime Minister of Bahamas, no, St. Lucia, just after the, the weekend in Bahamas, and he went in Geneva, and frankly, he explained very well that the future of your country, and it was before the COVID-19 issues, huh, that uh, the, the future of your country is in her end, not in your end, which is democratically a problem. So it's why it's so important to, to support you 
and be sure that we will do what we can, of course, in order to help you to access to fund and to better programs related to a good recovering and trying to, to use properly all the resources that you have in your country. Thank you, um, DSG. I would like to maybe just also reassure uh, Sharon that um, because of you mentioned the work that we're doing that UNCTAD is supporting member state in the uh, framework of the Friends of SDG Financing Initiatives. Um, UNCTAD is, support, is the lead on the external finance remittances, job and inclusive growth. So we have our colleague really f working and supporting you, Member State, on that um, uh, discussion group, as well as the one on debt vulnerability and illicit financial flow. So you definitely can count on us um, to try to put all of the capacity that we have forward to support you. Um, we have a question from uh, somebody that I know. I've met her in the in the journalist room a few times. Um, Gloria uh, Starkins, please go ahead with your question. Uh, Ambassador, over the years, and of all the countries now that really have a tremendous opportunity is Guyana. There are 800,000 people. They're the size of Qatar, and they have discovered petroleum, they have agricultural resources. It's a country that's going to need all hands on deck, including the young people that you mentioned. Uh, I believe now they're diaspora who are all over the world and very high level. Guyana has amazingly well-educated uh, uh, members of their community all over the world. Our, my question is for the ambassador of Guyana also, will they encourage these people to have double passports or if not, however, to come back and be a part of the team? They're an incredible country. Thank you so much, Gloria. Um, will, would uh, Ambassador Pierre or Madame Durand want to address this, the diaspora in the and also bring it back with talent? I, I, go, go, go ahead, go ahead. I will alternate gender, so it's your, it's your turn. <laughs> yes, okay, I will. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Secretary General. I'll, I'm very happy to answer the question uh, from an, in a national capacity, and then you can probably address a, a, the response from the work that UNCTAD is doing in this area. Um, I, I, I thank the, 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 the questioner uh, for highlighting the specific circumstances of Guyana and the potential that the country has, particularly in terms of the diaspora, uh, its uh, brain drain that, has, that it has suffered from. Um, the, the, question, the answer is really yes, all the governments, uh, including the current government and the, and the past governments, have emphasized the importance of uh, implementing a viable diaspora policy whereby the uh, skills that are available and not just skills but populations abroad of Guyanese can contribute to the, uh, the, the development of the country. What form this takes uh, varies from policy initiatives from the different governments pursue. Uh, the state of affairs of Guyana right now is that we're sort of waiting for the results of uh, recent elections that were held and uh, a, a government is a new government is likely to be in place we don't know yet uh, there hasn't been a final declaration of the results but i have no doubt that in the interests of the country and where we're poised now with the discovery of oil and gas um, all of the talents that, that guyana has to offer whether within the country or abroad will have to come on board at, in some shape or form and the government will have to play a role in facilitating this. Uh, so I, I hope I've answered your question. Thank you very much for asking it. Madame Durand? Yes, Chantaline. Um, I, I, I would answer in my capacity and, of course, not as a member state. Um, I think that the, we, have, we, we have to count on diaspora uh, for development. But the problem is also that this diaspora sometimes a lost uh, uh, revenue in the countries where they are living everywhere in the world. And it's why we, we, we know that we will have a, a decreasing of the remittances in all the countries. I don't know what it, what it means for some specific countries 
country by country, but it's it's a fact that probably remittances will decrease in the next period because of some of the diaspora lost uh, uh, revenue or possibilities in the framework of what they are doing in the country where they are. So that's one problem. The second problem is really what what you to to call to to the brain drain in the good sense. I mean that the 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 the, the, the diaspora could help. Uh, coming back in the countries, trying to uh, bring what they what they learned and what they what they what they know in the in their country, and it's why I'm sure that national governments has really to encourage and also to to incentivize this uh, capacity, and also sometimes to protect. It's not a protectionism; it's a protection. That I think that protectionism it's not the same as protection. And that if countries could protect some aspect of trade, of some aspects which are really important for the recovery, it's important to protect your you environment, not only the physical environment, your economic environment, your industry, the capacity when you when you invite investor to come, maybe you have to really uh, try to defend and to protect your capacity to have really the transfer that you hope and that you wish with this investment or uh, external or foreign investment. And I think that this protection is important in this period in order to really contribute to this recovery. So, um, yes, it's something that you have to count with. It's the diaspora, even if probably the remittances will decrease in the first, uh, first period after COVID. So we are expecting that the, to drop by more than more or less hundred billion dollar in 2020. Well, that's globally yeah, for all the world. That's a forecast of the decreasing of remittances. So it doesn't mean that in the, you will decrease. You will have the same decreasing in your own country. But globally, we count that probably we could lose a uh, hundred billion dollar in 2020 with the decreasing of remittances because the diaspora is also losing money in the country where they are living. Or, 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 uh, or having revenue. So that's what I wanted to add to, you, to your question. Thank you, Madame Durand. I have the honor and the pleasure to give the uh, screen to Ambassador Roca of Cabo Verde. And I think there's opportunity to let people know that please send a note to everyone or to me because uh, otherwise I can't see them. Thank you. Ambassador Roca, you have the floor. Uh, je voudrais d'abord commencer en français pour saluer Madame Durand. I'd like to start in French to greet Madame Durand that I met when I was a student in Belgium, when I was ambassador in Belgium, and we met in other occasions. Okay. Uh, thank okay. you very much, Madame <laughs> Durand, for being here uh, with us today. I, I appreciate also the, the, the collaboration I have here in New York with uh, Madame Chantal Carpentier. She is a very good representative. I'm not saying that just to, 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 to throw flowers. It's true. Uh, I would like also to align myself with the declaration or the statement made by G77. As you know, uh, we, we don't have to repeat SITS. It's a special case for uh, development in the three dimensions of the sustainable development, be it in the structural situation of their own vulnerabilities or in the emergency situation like the COVID that is adding to the, pre to the previous uh, situation. If I take an example of my country, we, we, we are doing well, plus 5.7% plus of GDP growth. And suddenly, because we stop tourism, we stop air transportation, we stop internal demand and investments, all these uh, economic prospects for 2020 went down to minus 6% and a huge deficit adding to our debt stressed situation. Uh, it's why uh, when we, we approach the small island developing states since 1992 in the Earth Summit, we are saying that we need a coordinated approach by the international community. We need an integrated support in programs because it's not easy just to say we have program of actions at the global stage. We need to tailor them in discussion with the national authorities in order to build some uh, national programs that can bring response. And uh, I believe the exercise that we are doing now with the integrated national financial framework 
at the United Nations is a, is a tool that can help on that. Of course, I, uh, my, my Prime Minister took the floor during the SDG financing conference, and we are following up in the context of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, growth, debt, external assistance, and so on, the different groups. There are six groups we are trying to follow. It's not easy, but we are trying to follow. But above all, if we need, if we need to approach uh, the SEED's special case, we need to merge the GP, GDP per capita because you have different levels of GDP per capita among the seats, be them in the Pacific, Caribbean, or in the region where I come from, which is African, Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean, and Southeast Pacific, I must say, is the less targeted group of seats. We must approach them equally. Then we, mu we must merge the, the eligibility criteria, the GDP cr uh, criteria in the vulnerability to have a uh, harmonized eligibility criteria to finance, but also to access external markets. Because when you are a small island developing state and you have been graduated, you are out of accessing small uh, 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 external markets because they are starting to put to you a lot of bottlenecks in that. I believe trade is an important resource for development. It's taken as, just, as such in the Addis Ababa agenda. It is important that uh, programs can build the capacity of small island developing states in doing trade, in, 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 in making uh, uh, productive uh, and service value chains. This is very important because very often they say, you have to export, but in order to export, we have to produce. How to produce if you don't have investment? And investment is related to our scale, small dimension, it's not very attractive then it's, it is important to build on this. It's why my proposal is that after this, if we can have some discussions, some useful discussions between the New York UNCTAD and the LCs in order to see how concretely UNCTAD can bring those different mechanisms that you mentioned and other uh, 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 tools in order to support uh, seeds from the trade perspective, trade capacity building, trade uh, productive and service value chain and trade access an eligibility criteria for seats because beyond gdp seats still have a lot of difficulties to to go to the markets be them financial market or just a value chain market i i stop here because otherwise i could go go and go thank you very much for your attention Thank you, Ambassador, and I hear you. So, uh, Madame Zura. Yes, so, um, first of all, uh, merci pour cette, uh, ce gentil petit mot en français. J'ai eu le plaisir de venir au Cap Vert uh, il y a quelques années, juste après la graduation du Cap Vert, et j'ai de, bon, de très bons souvenirs des discussions que j'ai eues à l'époque, déjà à l'époque, il y a de ça presque dix ans, euh, avec entre autres les représentants du gouvernement sur la difficulté d'être gradué dans les conditions actuelles de la graduation. And it's true that we are, as you, defending the fact that GDP per capita is not a good criteria or not enough, and that we have first of all to standardize the things related to GDP, and secondly to add the criteria with vulnerability, because there are specific vulnerabilities which has to be taken into account in order to calculate uh, this graduation uh, process and grad access to the graduation. That's one thing. The other thing, it's import the importance to really work collectively with the different sites because you are small countries, a small population, a very specific group of country, and it's why you could count on us in order with also the Jamaican ambassador, which is a very, uh, uh, very uh, uh, vocal uh, advocate for the same issue that, that you mentioned the really coordinated approach for the seats in order to change the rule, the rule of the, the calculation of the, the different aspects uh, and vulnerability, the specific support that you need uh, in different aspects and especially related to debt. Maybe you have to have access to specific issues or forgiveness of debt or, or bonds helping the countries with specific action that you, you have to take on environment, climate issues, or the question that you are, of course, uh, uh, far from the rest of the world, which, which, mean, which means a cost and which 
um, made difficult uh, investment attractiveness. So it's why we need a re really big effort, collective effort on SITS. And it's why we will, we will frankly work with you on that. Be sure. Thank you. Thank you, Madame Zeran. And also, uh, as, as you may know, and I'm sure you, Ambassador Roca, knows, but not, maybe not everyone, we work very closely with the WTO and our colleague uh, at EIF, uh, EIF um, on aid for trade. And so this is an area uh, that is with business linkages and business facilitation as well, as well as what Madame Durand mentioned on our, our um, uh, e-business. So the, the, all the online um, facilitation for business registration, e-registration, e-payments, uh, so that business can be formalized and then as well as the other facilitation, as well as this maritime connectivity, which is very important for, for the SIDS. Um, if I may, Madame Duras, so this is an area we, we measure with the maritime con connectivity. This is an, an example of how with the COVID-19, we've adapted our project on the development account to better serve countries for, with COVID-19. So this is how quickly can a country be deserve, serve uh, through maritime transport. And so this is a connectivity. So the lower the, the 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 higher the index, the higher the connectivity. And the lower the index, the harder it is to to get those goods. And so we're trying to also document this. Um, and this is a, a a project that we're doing. I can't remember which which of our colleagues, Madame Durand, do you remember? Yeah, absolutely. And I would like to to uh, and Sharon also uh, spoke about that. It's important if you have you if you if you will have a very good advocacy for your countries to have data data con contextualization and enough uh, argument in order to convince the important to change the rules and it's why uh, in this uh, regard UNCTAD is dedicated to provide this analysis uh, data and element helping to show and to prove to the rest of the world or to the rest of the organization and also to advocate in other places where we are not the, the the we have not the power to decide but we have the power to really convene and trying to really highlight the specificity of your countries in order to develop trade facilitation access to finance uh, uh, to funding but also the question of uh, incentivized investment and develop digitalization I think that all those aspects we will help you to contextualize and to provide you data and to support a collective action of SITS in order to really advocate strongly, especially now after COVID-19, um, we, we will do that and continue to do that. Thank you. So I don't have any more questions in the box. Anybody that wants to just turn their camera on and raise their hand, we could also do that. That still works. Or you can do it in the uh, chat box uh, by clicking on participant. And uh, if you click your, right click your name, you can raise your hand in there as well. Otherwise, I might just uh, pinpoint some of my colleague that I see online. I'm not seeing a hand right now. I'd be curious to see if uh, Sharon or yeah, yeah. Uh, Ambassador Pierre would like to uh, respond in light of what the discussion has been. Hi, this is Sharon. Let me turn on this video. Um, Hi. Oh, there's Ambassador. Please, no, Ambassador, you go, you go first. Sharon, go ahead. You go ahead first. <laughs> Everybody's too polite. Um, I think the conversation has shown that that there's a lot of there's a lot of room to work, and there are a lot of things to work on. I think Ambassador Rosha pointed to some very um, important issues that we also need to take into consideration in, in um, rebuilding countries and helping countries to really recover. Um, I'm actually glad that you asked me if I had anything else to add because I, I did want to, to say that I don't want it to seem that that six countries are only bent on going back to what they had. So helping to rebuild tourism and doing it in a, in a way that's suitable for the population in a, in a safe way, I guess but not only that. And I think maybe we have to think about 
when we were encouraged to diversify our countries and our markets that we sometime did um we took what we were really good at maybe before and we exchanged it for something else and so there's not a true diversification of economies um it's it's better it's easier in some spaces than it is in others but surely there must be something that can be done um and i i would say that we really do look forward to a continued really good relationship with UNCTAD to helping us to, um, to come up with solutions and to see what works and where they work. Yeah. For me, Chantal, thank you very much. Chantaline, I can, I, I can answer. Oh, yeah. I, I, I asked the permission. <laughs> <laughs> no, just I, I would like to on the diversification uh, that Sharon just mentioned. I think that it's true that we have to work together on the way to not only on tourism but also on creative economy, blue economy, and different aspects, bio trade, diversity, etc. Maybe we have to explore uh, the, 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 the sector where uh, the seeds could really develop their own specificity, rules of origin, for instance, on all those aspects which, we, which maybe was not enough uh, um, uh, deeply uh, uh, investigated before. I think that we can do more on that and try to really help for some specific action which could help in this recovery not only to do exactly the same but well well we have to of course to encourage tourism but also try to diversify the, the source of revenue and especially for the specific population of those countries so it's why we have to investigate the new sector that we, we could develop in those specific places uh, and countries in order to really have an, a more diversified uh, approach for the future just that and, there, and thus we build, recover better and greener. <laughs> yeah. Ambassador, sure. Ambassador Pierre, yeah. Th thank you very much, Chantaline. Um, I, I, I'm really glad that Sharon did go before me with her uh, second intervention, because I really um, totally support the, the, the view expressed that Diversification is really crucial in, in the post-COVID uh, context. Um, they say quite often, and it's become very trite now, that uh, a crisis is a bad thing to waste. We are faced with a pandemic, but we are also faced with opportunities and choices to not just build back better, but do things differently. Um, Fortunately, we have the tools at the global level and even at the national level, because the 2030 agenda and the Addis Ababa action agenda are comprehensive enough to provide the normative framework that, that, that we need to guide our work at the national and regional levels. And so I wanted to make that point also. One of the key things that I think UNCTAD, uh, we would look forward to UNCTAD doing more of is promoting the sense of investment uh, in in, in uh, diversifying investment sources into uh, developing countries. And that is where the di economic diversification is likely to, to come from once we can attract uh, a wider range of uh, investment uh, partners uh, into, our, into our countries. Uh, there is a plethora of things that UNCAD is working on, and we look forward to actually join, joining with you uh, in the period ahead to look at where the opportunities exist that we can um, capitalize on what this pandemic now presents to us in terms of doing things differently going forward. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you for this this uh, this this way to present because, frankly, the uh, BBB uh, building better uh, back building back better. Uh, I'm a little bit fed up with that because we are hearing that every time and I think that what you just mentioned is very important is do the thing differently. It's not better. What does it mean better? I think that differently, yes, more diversified, more sustainable, more green uh, and, and, and fighting against inequalities uh, and providing jobs. I think that's what we have to do. And I like this uh, this. Um, appellation do differently and maybe i will keep that in mind for the for the covid 19 report that we are preparing because i think that the bbb 
we, we read it that in all the reports and without any specification of what it means really, if it is just to, to recover, yes, better. What means better? Better for whom? Better for population? Better for investor? Better for big industries? Or better for the development aspect? So it's why I think that this this way to 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 name the issue is not correct. So I like you, you, you what you mentioned. Thank you. <laughs> and I gave you a very big thumbs up. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. And, and maybe just to complement what uh, Madame Zeran said, as you know, Ambassador, uh, UNCTAD was mandated by you, Member State, to actually produce a Secretary General report, Secretary General report on investment for sustainable development. And in that report, that will be coming your way for the second committee this fall, uh, UNCTAD does put forward some of these um, ways, these various ways that have come out uh, from our work working with investment promotion agencies and uh, adding a special economic zone that are dedicated to circular economy and in various other ways to actually help and also with Ambassador Roca um, to, to bring the trade and bring the investment in countries. And so we look forward to be able to share that report with you shortly. Madam, Madam, can I say it? Yes, yeah, somebody. Madam moderator, I'm Gloria Kins again. I wanted to congratulate you. I've been through, all, through UN Zooms and all sorts of convocations. This is the most exciting. It's saying what you really can do and where you can go. And Madam moderator, I want to, to really congratulate you and your whole team that are on today. And how can we be in touch with all of you if necessary to follow through uh, with add-ons that might be of value with the UN offices practically empty? How can we be in touch with all of you? Thank you so much for the compliment and I'll pass them right on to my Deputy Secretary General and our Secretary General, Dr. Kitui, because this is teamwork as well as the others behind my, Madame Zua. But thank you so much. And I will put my email in this uh, in the chat box and anybody that wants to reach out to me. I'm not on campus, but I'm working 12 hours a day as I always do, because this is this is special time and we we cannot slack our work right now. We need to be there for, for people that need us. Ambassador Roca, I saw that you had uh, your hand up. Yes. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Uh, just one more question before closing. Uh, since we have been talking about uh, diversification, from my point of view, uh, small islands are small because they have small land mass, small population, small economy, small fiscal space, and they are far from every big market. Then there, there is a lot of obstacles that we must overcome. Uh, but going across the spectrum of the different regions, Pacific, Caribbean, and Ace, you have different uh, uh, growth opportunities. Then it is important that we build, we can support those countries to build their own competitiveness, uh, regardless of the sector. They have to build competitiveness to, yes. to produce, to export, and to approach markets. Second point is everything is in the Addis Ababa agenda. But from one conference to another, what we say, we need to implement it in a proper way to bring results from the global stage to the local needs of the population. And very, very often, uh, GDP per capita, right, the real needs of those countries. Then it is very important then if you can implement those measures in a tailored net. And third and last remark is about debt. Many, many small island developing states, they are in high level debt distress because uh, they, they, they don't have any more concessional flows. And second, uh, it is important that we go beyond just some uh, uh, suspensions of debt service. It's important that we can build some debt relief, heal concrete situation, and to revert that, that, that debt relief to, the, to support uh, development programs like the bond impact, green bonds, 
uh, and so on bonds. It is very important that those solutions of debt just can just they cannot just delete debt. They, they must revert the, the gains of those debts to support some programs in order to forge competitiveness, in, in order to build uh, social inclusion and climate resilience. These are very three important areas for seeds. Thank you. Thank you so much for your passionate uh, call, but I'll, I'll pass that right on to Madame Durand. Madame Durand, vous, vous avez la parole. Voilà. Um, so, first of all, thank you for this very interesting conversation and uh, personal contact, because I think that it's important to, even if it's not physical, we can really uh, uh, discuss uh, with each other and try to exchange ideas and, and, and tracks for the future. Uh, just to let you know that uh, um, we are also working on a capacity, uh, capacity, productive capacity index. That's really important because when you speak about diversification, you have also to choose uh, uh, adequately which are the sector where, where, where you can develop really productive capacity and not only have activities which are maybe temporary or, oh, okay, we will, we will try and we will see. No, it's not a way to work. So I think that this index on productive capacity will help you to really, really identify where you can, on a sustainable way and on long term, develop something which is solid, robust, and providing revenue, which is frankly the goal. So uh, um, I'm sure that we, we continue and we have a lot of things to do together in this Addis Abeba agenda, but also in other fields, in tourism, in diversification, on debt. Uh, and uh, we will continue, especially because our next conference will take place in a small island, so it's in the Barbados uh, in April next year, and it will be a good occasion to really advocate and, and, and build something which is robust for the developing of your country. So uh, I think that we are really totally engaged uh, and committed to that and be sure that we will not forget that's not only a momentum for a discussion, it's really something that we will continue to, to do especially because of COVID-19, give us the possibility to do differently for the future. And that's what we will try to do. So thank you to all of you. Thank you, Chantaline and all uh, the, the, the friends and staff who help us to organize this event. It's not the first, it's not the last one. And uh, I hope that soon we can meet physically in New York or in Geneva uh, or everywhere or in Cabo Verde or Feliz, or I don't know where, or in Barbados. Uh, just in order also to have the pleasure to exchange uh, together and try to not only to convince each other, we are convinced, but maybe to add a human touch to this uh, commitment. So uh, for all of that, thank you. Have a good afternoon in New York uh, uh, and uh, maybe a good evening in Europe and um, see you the next time. Thank you, Madame Zura. Thank you so much for your always your kindness and your very um, uh, generous offer to help us uh, with uh, with the work that we do. And I would like to just thank every uh, member state and every constituency and colleagues from the UN system that have joined us today. And I would like to just conclude in with one statement from our our Secretary General, Dr. Kitui, uh, who says uh, basically the COVID-19 has uh, has just demonstrated and highlighted the pre-existing conditions, and we cannot, as the ambassadors have said and Dr. Isabel Durand said, we cannot build back better because back. It was not working. So why would you want to go back to something that doesn't work? So let's do differently. Let's do better and, and we can do it together. So thank you so much, everyone, and happy high level political forum week for the rest of the week. And see you soon, I hope, in New York. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.